Hello students, today we're going to look at modeling with functions. We're going to specifically look at how functions can be used to represent relationships between real quantities, and then we'll use our knowledge of functions to learn more about these relationships. Let's start with our first situation. A company makes breakfast cereal boxes that have the following proportions. The width is three times its depth, and the height is five times its depth. Find a function that models the volume of the box in terms of its depth. Find the volume of a box if its depth is 1.5 inches. For what depth is the volume 90 cubic inches? So we want to find a function that models this situation, and we want to use that function to solve a couple of problems involving these breakfast cereal boxes. So to make a function that models the volume, we want the volume based on the depth. Because we're looking for a function that models the volume, we're going to be looking for v as a function of d. That's what we're asked for, the volume in terms of depth. Now, if we draw just a generic cereal box like this, then we know that we have the width, the depth, and the height, and the volume is the product of these, the width times the depth times the height. So what we need to do is we need to write all of these quantities in terms of the depth because we don't want this to be a function with three different variables. That's not something we're going to be looking at until much, much later. We want everything written in terms of depth. But we do have some information to help us. The width is three times the depth and the height is five times the depth. So if we have width times depth times height, we can then replace all of these with expressions in terms of the depth. So the width is three times the depth. We can express that as three times d, then times the depth, then times the height, but the height is five times the depth, which is five d. And if we multiply all of these together, we end up with 15d cubed. So the volume as a function of the depth is 15d cubed. That's the answer to the first question we were asked. Now we need to find the volume of a box if its depth is 1.5 inches. Well, all we need to do there is evaluate this function when d is 1.5. So this is going to be 15 times 1.5 cubed. And if we evaluate this with a calculator, we get 50.625. And this is going to be measured in cubic inches. So that will be the volume. This could be useful for the cereal company to know in the event where they've learned that a 1.5 inch depth works well for fitting a lot of cereal boxes on a shelf and they want to know how much cereal they can actually fit inside that box. Let's look at the last question here. For what depth is the volume 90 cubic inches? So in this case, it's the volume that's going to end up being 90. So we can replace volume with 90 in that function equation. And that gives us 90 equals 15 d cubed. And then we can solve for d to find the depth. If we divide both sides by 15, 90 divided by 15 is 6, so we get 6 equals d cubed. And if we have d cubed and we want to figure out what d is, we need to take the cube root because the cube root undoes the cubing. 
So this gives us d equals the cube root of 6. And we weren't asked for an approximation, but it's good to get one because if you're going to a manufacturing company and they say, what do you want the depth to be? And you say, oh, the cube root of 6 inches, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. So we can use a calculator to approximate this, and this is approximately 1.8 inches. So if we want to create a cereal box that has a volume of 90 cubic inches, perhaps we've learned that that's the amount of cereal that a family wants each week or something like that, then we need to create the box so that the depth is 1.8 inches. In general, functions are a great way for us to write relationships between different quantities and then use those relationships to learn more and answer questions about the situation. Take a look at the videos linked below to get an idea of some of the other functions that can be used to model different scenarios and the other questions that we can answer using our knowledge of functions.